In this video series, I will show you how to simulate the performance of input capacitors in three dimensions. We will only use the free layout tool KiCad and the free electromagnetic simulation tool OpenEMS. The first setup is to simply place two capacitors in parallel. The problem with this setup is that the fields on a trace don't just extend in one direction, but around the whole trace. So this capacitor arrangement only filters on this side, but the filtering effect on the opposite side is less. I will compare a few solutions to this problem. The first one will be to place the capacitors in a butterfly configuration. If you google for feed-through or free terminal capacitors, you can even buy this configuration as a single component. But I will always use the same capacitor pair for the simulations to make the results more comparable. Another potential solution is the anti-parallel configuration. This one has following proposition. By placing the capacitors this way, this capacitor will deliver current in this direction and this one in this direction. As the currents are in opposite directions, the magnetic fields will cancel each other out to some extent, which avoids common mode currents and emissions. In some sources, I also found this setup where the capacitors are additionally turned by 90 degrees with the intent to minimize the current loop area. Let's now finally start with the simulation process. We will start off by simulating a simple 50 ohm resistor. After that we will simulate the 0402 capacitor. I already created these files and provided you the link to them in the description. If you're new to this channel, please first watch the tutorial video on how to install OpenEMS. What I have drawn here is the following setup. I did this manually, don't worry, soon we will import the layout via KiCad, but first let's simulate this simple example to see what things you have to take care of. We will simulate 0402 components, this is the size of a typical 0402 capacitor. The height of a 0402 resistor would be a bit lower, but I will ignore this for the simulation to keep things simple. Let's now start the free cut to open EMS macro and work through the tabs. As I already have made quite a few OpenEMS videos and I don't want to bore you with repeating the same task of filling out these tabs, let's this time just load a prepared settings file. This is how the assignment tab looks like. Keep in mind that this is always the last tab to fill out. You will first need to define all the properties in the other tabs. Here are the grid settings. I only created air and a pack material. Pack means perfect electric conductor and is used for all our copper parts. In this case it will be the trace that connects the injection port and the resistor. We will inject the Gaussian signal with a frequency of 100 kHz to 1 GHz. The input port is 50 ohms. The direction here is important, please use the set direction. In the lumped parts tab I define the resistor with 50 ohms. The probe tab is empty. In the simulation parameter tab I define 1 million samples and set the boundary to pack. So we act as if we are measuring the resistor inside a perfectly shielded metallic enclosure. Let's now generate the main code and also the S11 code. Let's now first open the main code. and run it. Confirm the message in the command window with yes. Close the 3D preview window. Once the simulation is finished, open the S11 code and run it as well. As you see, the resistance value is quite stable until 1 GHz. Close all windows. As we now gain some confidence in the simulation process, let's simulate the capacitor the same way as the resistor, with just some small modifications. In the FreeCut project for the capacitor simulation, I just renamed the part from resistor to capacitor. Let's go to the SimSurfing website of Murata. I will simulate a 1 microfarad capacitor. Let's open the FreeCut to open EMS marker. Load the settings file. Compared to the resistor simulation, I only changed the lump parts tab. Let's change to the process tab, generate the main code and also the S11 code. Open the generated main code and run it. 
Once done, also run the S1 code and close the pop-up windows. Open the generated CSV file. And let's create the XY graph. Well, the impedance at lower frequencies does not have the expected V-shape. We can solve that by changing our minimum decrement from minus 40 decibels to minus 50 decibels. And also by increasing the time step to let's say 10 million samples. If this still would not be enough, you can adjust the values even further. As you see, our simulation results and the data from Murata match quite well. So I guess we can finally proceed with the layout comparison.